We're here with Douglas Taylor, who is a speaker and lecturer at uh, Contact in the Desert, the UFO conference here in Joshua Tree. Um, hi, Douglas. Well, hello. Nice to be here with you. Um, we're glad you could be here. So um, tell us about uh, the lecture and workshop that you're giving this weekend at Contact in the Desert. Yes. Uh, well, my workshop, actually it's a lecture, it wasn't a workshop, but anyway, it was called Inside a Starship, A Visionary Journey to Life on Other Planets. And so I had an experience back in 1978 when I was in the Caribbean Islands, actually I was in Puerto Rico, and I actually was psychically taken aboard a starship and telepathically communicated with the individuals in the ship. And it had such a tremendous positive impact on me at the time. And um, when I got back from that particular surf trip, I was over there surfing, um, about a month later I started drawing. I'd never been involved in art or any kind of creative expression, really. And um, after that experience, I felt this tremendous power and this creative energy that just blew my mind. And I'd experienced it maybe a little bit here and there when I would be surfing, having a really, you know, good experience. But um, I started drawing UFOs when I got back. I was about 25 at the time. This is like 77, 30-some years ago. And um, I found that when I would um, express myself creatively, I would be able to, in a sense get back in touch with that positive energy that I felt when I was in the ship. And since that time, it's been an education of just incredible proportions that, you know, I've been able to uh, do a lot of painting. Uh, I've incorporated into my work. I'm a finished carpenter. So it, it's been, you know, basically just a, a gigantic education and very helpful to me and always possible. Hmm. Wow. So you went, when you say you were um, psychically taken, was it, did you go to sleep and then kind of start having yes, an experience? Yes, it was. It was like in a sleep state. I had become um, aware of the fact that your body can move out, in a sense, your spiritual body, your psychic body, can move out of your physical body when you're asleep. I'd been practicing techniques for some years before that. And so I, I felt that experience of, of actually leaving my body and then just appearing aboard this ship and communicating with these individuals. Now, whether it was just a fantasy, um, I would say it wasn't just because of the tremendous power that I felt and the impact it had on my life. So, you know, whatever you want to call it, it was certainly something that uh, changed my perspective on life. Hmm. It sounds pretty profound, if especially if, uh, you know, it caused you to, you know, completely change your perspective. Um, that's always a characteristic that seems to happen with these ex sort of experiences. Well, it's been like an ongoing um, education. I was always interested in understanding the mind. I was very much interested in science. And so the skeptic in me would, you know, say, this is fantasy, this is science fiction. But the, uh, I guess you could say the, the realistic expression of being able to do something that I had never done before, such as painting and becoming artistic, and writing and doing all kinds of different uh, things I hadn't done before. That was part of the process because that's where I really learned about myself. You know, it was, a, it was learning about my own blocks and how to, you know, basically begin to remove them. And so that was kind of what I would, what I call an extraterrestrial science, the science of energy, of learning that we are all energy beings and that we have lived many lifetimes and in some of those past lives we have blocks that we can remove and this is something they utilize on these higher spiritual planets and even on some of these higher uh, physical planets as a way of keeping a very very positive frequency uh, basically integrated into their planet as a whole the environment itself is on a much much higher level than the planet we live on is probably one of the lower uh, bastions of uh, physical planets. When this happened, you did you become a UFO researcher, would you say, right away? 
No, not um, not necessarily. I don't know that I was ever really. I would call myself a UFO researcher. It was more of a somebody who was a consciousness researcher and trying to understand the mind and and how it works. That was more of my uh, interest. It wasn't necessarily UFOs. I I really had no great interest in that specifically. It was more of seeing that these individuals and the technology that they used were something that were the future for individuals on this planet, such as myself or anyone else, who would be willing to go through the education to learn to maintain a positive state of mind, which is um, basically learning how to overcome various uh, negative aspects of your own personality, Mm -hmm. your fears and phobias and such as that. Mm -hmm. So I know a lot of people would would say that they'd want to experience what you experience. Um, what, what do you think the difference is between someone who, like yourself who has experienced this and then there's a lot of people who don't experience it? I wonder why that is. Do you have any insight into that? Well, it's not so much that um, it's kind of a situation where you could say when the student is ready, the master will appear. So, you know, you, you we all live in a fast food society. We want everything to happen, you know, now. And it doesn't work that way. You know, you, you've got to kind of be patient with sometimes things happen incredibly rapidly. And sometimes you just have to be super patient. And that's part of the, the process. Hmm. So have you been to uh, many of these sort of conferences? Do you get to go around and, and speak at a lot of uh, places like this? Yeah, I've been in these kind of conferences for God, probably 20, 25 years, something like that. Wow. So, yeah, I've been uh, been going and speaking at them. Any opportunity I get? Really? Mm-hmm. They have them kind of like all over the country? Uh, no, mostly uh, I've been pretty much in the California area and a few maybe in Nevada. But um, I don't really go to that many. I'm a, I actually work as a finished carpenter. That's how I make a living. Hmm. So, you know, for me, it's more of just a fun way of sharing, you know, my own uh, experience and gives me a, a chance to try and learn a better way of expressing myself in a positive way on the planet, hmm. really. So will you talk real quick about the process of your painting? So when you start creating a painting, how does your process work? Yeah, it's, you know, when when you first start painting, obviously, it's going to be pretty frustrating at first because you can't ever do what you were envisioning in your mind. But after a while, it becomes more of kind of a, a radio transceiving type of experience to where you know, you're tuning in to some positive, creative aspect that you want to portray on a canvas, you know, a painting. And so your mind can kind of attune to that higher frequency. And a lot of times the information will just flow incredibly fast. And the painting will be, you know, done real quickly and not always. You know, sometimes, you know, you have to, you have to work with it. But, um, yeah, it's, it's become kind of second nature. You know, and it's something that I never thought I would be involved in. And so it's obvious to me, anybody could do it. It's a matter of, you know, you have to, you know, go through the effort. And Mm. and it's not always easy, but uh, it's certainly worth the lessons that you gain from it. Mm. So if people are interested in getting in touch with you, uh, do you have a website or how could they do that? Yeah, I have a website. Um, It's solicjourneys.com. And that's the name of my book, basically, that I did some years ago. And uh, I have a lot of paintings on that website, too, so people could see them there. Okay, great. And I just want to say the paintings are really cool, so definitely go check them. Check out the website. Um, so, Douglas, thank you so much for talking with us. My pleasure.